I'm Sunday. Again. 10th have ministry by uh, Les and Linda Green uh, for, our, um, for our morning service as well. Um, April 17th, which is two days before my birthday, by the way, um, um, it will be Easter. And once again, we're going to have a, f- a free continental breakfast from uh, 8.45 to 9.30. Um, the last thing, um, Debbie asked me to ask me, uh, you may be wondering why, why the, the stuff, we're, we're, we're sending it to uh, Sam, Sam Keep, right? Yeah. Okay. Debbie asked if we could pray, if we, be, we, we could pray over the item, these items that are being sent over and basically pray, pray for God to, God to minister to people as we're doing, as, as, um, they, they get, they get these, they get these things. So we're, we're going to, we're going to do that really quick before I get, before I get into my message. Debbie, if you want, you, you want to come on up, come on up to, we'll, we'll kind of put our hands on them and y'all, y'all can pray along with us. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, for, for, for the, the people of Sam, Sam keep, the Sam keep home, Lord God. Lord God, there, all all those people they need they need a touch from you from the, not just the not just the people that are the, that are living there but the the workers as well. Lord God, and I just pray that as as um as the as they receive all these all these items that are being given, Lord God, Lord Jesus, that you would touch that you would touch people, Lord God, touch people's hearts, Lord God, give give them like that, give them just. Ha- just let them feel good, because sometimes, sometimes that's a it, that can be kind of a it it can be kind of a rough place, and they can feel feel alone. But Lord God, help them to help them people to realize that they're never alone yeah. with with you, Lord God. And I just pray you minister to to people's hearts, those that are living there, and those that are, those that are working there as well, Lord God. We just thank we just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Lord. It's not to toot our own horn, but it's to give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. It's not to lift. It's not to lift us up, but to lift you up, Lord. And I pray you would touch each and every. Each, I pray you would touch each and every person there in, in that in that place, Lord God. In your precious name, Amen. No problem. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Doing a lot. Using a little bit of technology. All my notes are on my are on my phone. Figure save. Figure save some paper. But. Anyway, um, kind of my, my introduction here. I had a totally different idea of what I, what I was planning on preaching about preaching about today. But last week, when Pastor Don was preaching, his whole third point was pretty much everything I was going to talk about. He was. I mean, I've had God change my sermon, change my sermon, but not not because of somebody else preaching. But at this kind of a new kind of new one. But I'm like, well, I was going to talk about prayer. But then, then I'm like, oh, wow, he's going there, isn't he? And I looked over to Amber. I'm like, well, well, honey, looks like I got to change my message. And she agreed. So as Pastor Don was wrapping up the message, I was like, okay, God, what do I talk about now? Because you pretty much stole, pretty much kind of stole my thunder. Slim, if, slim if you're watching, hi. <laughs> anyway. Hey, I, I like to I like to laugh. I like to laugh just as much as anybody else. If, if you can't, if you can't, you know what? If you can't laugh, what's 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 the alternative? Be miserable, anyway. But um, I was praying about what what to talk about. He was faithful. I started to think about how how Lyndon's going to be preaching, and there's going to be emphasis on praying for he, praying for people to be healed. And Pastor Don was talking about th- this word ex- expectancy that being expectant. And I'm like, I started to think about like, people might want to know what what that means to be expected and how, and how to be expected. So with his help, I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that, Got, trying to back my points up with the, with the Bible. I'm, but before I get before I go any further, I'm gonna pray real quick. Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, for giving me this opportunity, Lord, to preach your word, Lord. It's something I don't take lightly. Lord God, let it not be, let it not be my words, but let, let it be you speaking through me, Lord God. Help me, help me, Lord, to articulate what you've given me to say in a way that any, anybody, anybody would be able to understand and be able to get, to get the 
heart of what, what Lord, you, you're want, what you're wanting to say today, Lord God. And I just thank you, Lord, for this, this um, opportunity, Lord God. Lord, I need, I need you. We all need you. But, Lord, I need you to speak through me, Lord. And I, I know you'll be faithful to do it. In your precious name, amen. Um, bef- I, started, I started by looking up. I went, on, I went what I call the Google machine. Um, I decided to look up the definition of that word expect. And three things. It's to regard, to regard something as likely to happen, to, reg, to regard someone as likely to do or be something, or to believe that someone or something will arrive soon. I looked at those definitions of, the, of that word expect. It made me think about how I feel like we need to approach the, the next week's service with Lyndon preaching and how there's going to be prayer for healing. I believe we need to go into the service basically believing and regarding that God's going to heal people, that, that, that the healing's going to take place. And basic, basically, if you have any kind of sickness or injury or whatever, I feel like, God, feel like anybody in the Watertown, New York area, you need, you need to come because I'm believing God's going to heal you. And I'll be the first to admit I need some healing myself. I'll, be the, I'll probably be one of the first ones up, 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 up here next week. I'll tell you that right now because um, mostly, some of you, a lot of you probably know about the issues I've had with my neck and my arm. And basically, the update is I have a pinched nerve somewhere, and they're going to. I'm doing. Phys, I'll be doing physical therapy. They're going to do a nerve conduction test, and they're going to do an MRI to see what, exactly what's going on, and whatever. But. We're going to believe that God's going to do, and God's going to, I'm going to believe that God's going to do something next week. But, but, okay, a little sidebar here before I get into the rest of my message here. I'm not, I'm not saying that we, Pastor Dom's talked about this to do, about demand, basically demand, or, and I've had, I've had, so I heard other preachers talk about dem, how we, about how people demand God to do anything. I, here's my here's my take on it. Okay, none of us are in a position to demand anything from God. We command Him to do anything, in my opinion. Anything who thinks they can is walking in complete arrogance and pride and needs to repent. Because who does anybody think that we are, as an imperfect human being, to think that we can demand anything from an absolutely perfect God? And command Him to do anything. Okay. Um, I want to. I'm going to read a read a few pa- a couple passages of, from the Bible, and then I'm going to kind of um, expand on my points. Um, Mark chapter. I'm going to Mark chapter 11, and I'll be starting. I'll be starting in verse 12. I'm going to be reading two different pa- two different passages from Mark chapter 11. Okay, Mark chapter 11. Starting in verse 12, I'm going to read to 14, and then I'm going to read to 20, read 20 and 24. Okay, verse 12. Now, now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing seeing from afar off a fig tree, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season of figs. In response, Jesus said to it. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples heard it. Now I'm going to go, go down to verses 20 through 24, and then I'm going to, then I'm going to kind of expand on my, point, my points I'm going to make here. On verse 20, Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed withered away. So Jesus answered and said, said, said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever, has, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he, the, that those things he says will, will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. There's so many things we can get out of this story of how Jesus curse the fig tree the main points i want to make here 
are from uh, verses 22 through 24. Verse 22 basically says, have faith in God. To expect that God is going to do something, and in the, in the context of what's going, what the, the, the healing service next week, um, we can believe, we can basically, we need, we need to have faith in God to that we need to have faith in him that for him to to he, to be able to to heal if we don't if we don't have faith in him how can we really really expect God to do anything because we're not believing in him you know kind of kind of simple christian logic logic here but anyway we could be we could be pretty thick headed I'll, I'll be the first to admit I'm a bonehead <laughs> thank you i heard that I'm, I'm, I was waiting for a comment from my wife, but um, to no avail, but that, that's okay. Moving along. Love you, honey. <laughs> um, now, verses 23 and 24 basically say that, like, when we pray, we can believe that God, believe God will, do, will do something as long as we're not doubting in our hearts. Like, think, think about that, you know, the whole, the, the old saying about the doubting Thomas. If we're doubt, if we're doubting that God, that God, we don't think, oh, oh, he ain't gonna do anything. If we're doubting, we don't believe that God's gonna do anything. God certainly does not want us to doubt. Um, going to, I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna go to John chapter fourteen, and I'm reading. I'll be, I'm just gonna read a couple, a few verses here. John 14, verses 12 through 14. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and, great, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I'm especially going to focus here on verses 3, 13 and 14. Basically, if we ask anything in his name, according to his will, he'll do it. In the context of, I'm, I'm feel, what I'm doing here, I'm laying ground, I feel like I'm laying groundwork for next week's service. So we can believe that if we're asking people to be healed in Jesus' name, we can expect God's going to do it. We, it's actually the will of God for people to be healed. I'm just going to quote this because it's one of my favorite verses. And <laughs> y'all will like this. Most of you know I'm a metal, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, rock, I'm a rocker. I'm a metal head. Um, and one of my favorite, one of my favorite bands is Striper. And it, in their, their band logo, they have a verse, Isaiah 53, 5. And that's the verse I'm going to, I'm quoting here. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our uh, for our peace was upon him, and by and here's it here it is by his stripes we are healed. The last part of that says it all. When Jesus was whipped, through those stripes on his back, we can be healed. We are healed. Um, I'm one more. I'm go, gonna go what, the next chapter, and John. I'm going to go to John chapter 16. And next, I'm going to read. Um, John 15, verse, starting in verse 6, reading to 8. It says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather, gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you may bear much fruit, as you will be my disciples. Focusing on verse seven in, the, in this in this passage, basically the key a key of being expectant and expecting God to do something is to abide in Him and to have His words, His words. Not just this is important. The Bible is very important, but what God speak what God speaks to us. Um, let's see here. We we need to. Basically, we need to make sure we're doing, doing our best to have that relationship with him in prayer, studying the word, letting him speak to us. Not, through the, not just through the Bible, but also that still small voice. Um, next, I'm going to go to uh, Romans chapter 4. Um, 
Um, we're going to be reading Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and 21. Um, it says, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had been promised, he, he, was, he was also able to perform. These two per verses are packed with principles we can apply to being expectant for God to do something. When we're, pray, when we're praying for God to do something in his name, we can believe it'll happen. We can be full, like, like what this, these verses said, we can be fully convinced and persuaded that, what God, what God, that God will do what he, prom, what he has promised it in his word and what the things that he's spoken to us, we can believe God's going to do it. Like, if, like, like, let's just say, for example, if God promised that, hey, you're going to be healed. Yes, he's going to do it. And like, or if like God, God says, "Hey, you have a call on your life." He's gonna make He's gonna make that happen. But but we got to, of course, having to submit to His will. That's that's the most important thing. It's not He's not like, okay, yeah, you're go, you're gonna you're gonna do this. No, he, he gives us a choice to follow Him. But we also we need to be careful that we don't waver. It kind of goes back to what I was talking about, talking about earlier about about doubt. Like we can't allow those present circumstances that we're going through cause us to waver in doubt, because and then basically in doubt that God will make us not think, oh, He won't do what He says He's going to do. The minute we doubt is when we're is the minute we stop tapping into the measure of faith that God's already given us. I'm gonna I'm gonna back that up with I'm gonna back that up with the Bible here. Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to be reading verse 3. It says, For I say, say to the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. But here's the part right here. As God has dealt, dealt, dealt to each of us, each one, a measure of faith. And um, one more, I'm going to, Another, another verse, Hebrews chapter 10. And I'm going to read verse 23. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Basically, these verses... The ver this verse ba further reinforces the point I'm making about how we shouldn't waver or, do waver or doubt. Um, basic, because it also reinforces the point that he is faithful and he will be faithful to do what he says he will. Whether it's healing or moving, moving us into more of what he has for us, like a calling or promises he's made, like family members being saved and Stuff like that. He he says he says he's going to do that. He's going to. We can take that. We can take that to the bank. He's not a man that we, he would lie. He won't say, "Oh, I'm, oh, oh, yeah, you're going to do that. You can do all these things." And like, ha, no. <laughs> God's not like that. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I want to share one one little thought. Um, I most of my message most of my message was pretty much laying groundwork. I want the ba the main thing is like we. Just to bring like an expectation that healing's going to take place through, through next week during the service, and we, we can believe that God can heal anybody anytime, anytime. Okay, but I I really felt to lay the groundwork for next week because I believe God really wants to move, really wants to move, and it's like <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be personally I'm I want I want to see it. I mean we 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 need we need to see God we need to see God moving and he. And ministering to people and touching them, okay. But this concept of being expected doesn't just apply to healing. We can apply that to everything in life. But don't misunderstand me here. We could, we can't. I'm not saying we just did the whole name it and claim, name it and claim it thing, or what I call, or also call, also known as blab it and grab it. We could. I mean, it's like, oh, I, oh, I want this, oh, I want this hum, I want this Hummer, I want this Tesla, I want this Tesla, or whatever. <laughs> God provides for our, like, we, we can believe, but we can believe that God can provide for our needs. But, I mean, the Tesla or what, Tesla and all that, all, 
the good the, the good stuff the man or a man cave or whatever those are those are greeds okay those are greeds I mean I though I want them I want a man cave but man cave nerd den whatever but anyway <laughs> good made you laugh that's good that's good <laughs> but I'm saying we can if we if we're believing God to do something when asking ask and are asking in his name and abiding in him not wavering and doubting we can believe and be fully persuaded that God can meet us right where we're at if we're if we're like say for example we're believing God to provide if we're believing God to provide finances like say for example if you're struggling I'm gonna be like my, I'm gonna share a little example from our life there were, t- there were times we struggled fin- we struggled financially um we and we were believing God to provide he was faithful and he did. And it took some it took some it took some believing and praying and crying and stressing, gray hair, bald head. Oh boy. But anyway, we we believed. We believed God to do to do to do it. We knew God we knew God provi- provided. There's so many so many stories of God providing in the Bible, and he did it. And I've seen God heal me, do 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 heal do a healing thing in me. It's a miracle I'm even here right now. Cause some a lot of you know my story. I, w- I was supposed to be dead by the time I was 16 years old because of severe asthma. And I'll be 44 next month. And I was diagnosed with autism. And they said, pe- like a lot of people said, and even my old my old school said I wouldn't amount to anything. Anyhow, anyhow, but that's all. It's all, but it's not. It's nothing to toot my own. I'm not going to do toot toot. Anyway, but it's it's all for him, his glory. And anything that God does in me, it's for him. I'm. The, I will never toot my own horn. I, I, it's a it's a miracle. I'm even standing up here like this. I'd rather I want. I'd rather hide somewhere. Okay. That's what. And that's part of the reason why I get a, little, a lot. Some people say, Oh, why do you get so? Why do you get so nervous? One that I got, I'm like, eh, no, but it's it's a but being able to preach the word of God is so serious. It's a it's a serious thing. It's like I want I don't want to say anything out of, out of line out of, outside of what God wants me to say, it's, and I don't want to say anything that doesn't line up with this word. Okay, but anyway, uh, I think I'm pretty well done i know i preach i know i preach rules i know i preach real don't i don't like to preach long i never have years ago i was a youth pastor i was a youth pastor here's here's why i don't preach very long i was a youth pastor years ago a lot of teenagers they don't have they don't have the extension tension span just to sit there and watch watch someone watch someone talk for two hours if I had was talk for two hours, I'd be needing that, needing that, inha- needing my inhaler stat, okay? <laughs> but anyway, I just and when God when God gives me something to say, I just say what God wants me to say, and just just then just be quiet and let God let God do His thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share. I'm gonna do a quick do a word of prayer, and then we'll um then we'll be then we'll be done. You won't have to listen to me anymore. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you have a you have a sense of humor, Lord God. You, and Lord, Lord, you you. I lo- you you've given me, given us, the ability to be 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 joyful and laugh, and laugh, Lord God. We just thank you for that, Lord God. And Lord, in content in with this this message, Lord God, I just pray, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, you would help all of us, Lord God, to be expectant to see you to see you move in our lives. And next week, when Lyndon when Lyndon ministers, Lord God, they, that there's going to be healed that there'll be people that'll be healed. That God, that the Lord, you would do you would minister to people's hearts, Lord God, um, spiritually, emotionally, even physically, Lord God. And Lord, Lord, help us all to be expectant that that you will do. Every, do in our lives everything that you say you say will not just in all in your word 
but also in those those things you, that you promised you promised us in our in our times of prayer and everything, Lord God. Lord Jesus, I just pray, Lord, that you would touch each and every person's heart right now, Lord God. And Lord, that your perfect will would be done in each and every one of our lives, Lord God. And I, Lord, I just pray you'll bless each and every person, Lord God, and keep everybody safe. Till next time, till next time we come together, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray you. I just pray the Lord, you prepare the way for for next for next week, Lord God. I hope I hope Lord I was I did a good did a, did a good job of laying some groundwork to for people to be ex, to be expectant to be, expect to expect Lord you're gonna do that you're gonna do something, Lord God. Lord God, be with each every one of us. Thank you for thank you for this time you've allowed us to have together, Lord God. In your precious name, Amen. Don't forget your kid. Those your parents. Don't forget your kids. Pastor Dom's not here to to wrangle.